Since 2000, the number of motorcyclists killed on the roads and highways of the United States has increased by 80%. In 2007, more than 5,100 motorcyclists died on our roads, and motorcycles represent the greatest increase in any category, even during a time when passenger car fatalities are at an all-time low. Per vehicle mile traveled, motorcyclists are about 37 times more likely than passenger car occupants to die in a traffic crash. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, estimates that alcohol contributes to nearly one-third of all motorcycle fatalities. Clearly, enforcement of DWI laws is a key to reducing the number of alcohol-related motorcyclist fatalities. But what are the cues we should use to detect impaired motorcyclists? NHTSA selected Anacapa Sciences to conduct the research necessary to develop a set of behavioral cues Cues that can be used by law enforcement personnel to accurately detect motorcyclists who are operating their vehicles while impaired. They began by interviewing law enforcement officers from across the country to determine what behavioral cues had been observed in detecting impaired motorcyclists. Most officers recalled at least a few cues that they observed to discriminate between DWI and normal riding. A few, primarily motorcycle officers, suggested cues that reflected considerable understanding of the mental and physical requirements of riding a motorcycle. In addition to interviewing law enforcement personnel, the research team developed a database of 1,000 motorcycle DWI arrest reports. They focused on the officers' narratives and the behaviors that motivated the stops and correlated those behaviors with blood alcohol concentrations, or BACs. Analysis of the interviews and arrest report data resulted in an inventory of about 100 cues that have been observed by officers in association with impaired motorcycle operation. The researchers, working closely with law enforcement personnel, conducted two major field studies involving more than 50 sites throughout the United States. Officers recorded information about every enforcement stop they made of a motorcyclist. Those studies permitted the researchers to identify the most effective cues and to calculate the probabilities that those cues were predictive of DWI. This is what was found. 14 cues were identified that best discriminate between DWI and unimpaired motorcycle operation, but with some surprises. The cues have been labeled as excellent predictors and good predictors based upon the study results. Cues that are excellent predictors were found to be associated with impaired operation more than 50% of the time they were observed. Cues that are good predictors were found to be associated with DWI between 30 and 50% of the time. The special coordination and balance requirements of riding a two-wheel vehicle provide most of the behaviors in the excellent category of cues. For example, earlier studies have established that the most common cause of single vehicle fatal motorcycle crashes is for the road to curve and the motorcycle to continue in a straight line until they strike a stationary object. This type of crash is usually caused by alcohol-impaired coordination and balance ability. In less extreme cases, the motorcycle's turn radius expands during the maneuver. The motorcycle appears to drift to the outside of the lane or into another lane through the curve or while turning a corner. If you see a motorcycle drifting during a turn or curve, do the rider a favor and pull the motorcycle over. Our studies show there is an excellent chance that he or she is DWI. Parking and dismounting a motorcycle can be a helpful field sobriety test. The motorcyclist must turn off the engine and locate and deploy the kickstand. He or she must then balance their weight on one foot while swinging the other foot over the seat to dismount. The operator must also decide on a safe place to stop the bike. Problems with any step in this sequence can be evidence of alcohol impairment. 
we call this cue trouble with dismount. Not every motorcyclist you see having some sort of trouble with dismount is under the influence. But our study indicated that more than 50% of them are. The typical practice at a stop is for the motorcyclist to place one foot on the ground to keep the bike upright, while leaving the other foot on the peg nearest the gear shift lever. Some riders favor placing both feet on the ground for stability. Riders whose balance has been impaired by alcohol often have difficulty with this task. They might be observed to shift their weight from side to side, that is, from one foot to another, to maintain balance at a stop. From a block away, an officer might notice a single taillight moving side to side in a gentle rocking motion. If you observe a motorcyclist to be having trouble with balance at a stop, our studies show there is an excellent chance that he or she is DWI. The research identified four turning problems that are indicative of rider impairment. The gyroscopic effects of the motorcycle's wheel tend to keep a motorcycle on track as long as speed is maintained. As a motorcycle's speed decreases, the demands placed on the operator's balance capabilities increase. As a result, an officer might observe a motorcycle's front wheels or handlebars to wobble as an impaired operator attempts to maintain balance at slow speeds or during a turn. The next turning problem involves late braking during a turn or on a curb. A motorcyclist normally brakes prior to entering a turn or curb, so the motorcycle can accelerate through the maneuver for maximum control. An impaired motorcyclist might misjudge his speed or distance to the corner or curb requiring application of the brake during the maneuver. Third, a motorcyclist normally negotiates a turn or curve by leaning into the turn. However, when balance or speed judgment is impaired, the operator frequently attempts to sit upright through the maneuver. An improper turn angle can be detected by a trained observer. The fourth turning problem has to do with erratic movements. Erratic movements or a sudden correction of a motorcycle during a turn or curve can also indicate impaired operator ability. If you observe a motorcycle to be unsteady during a turn or curve, brake late, assume an improper turn angle, or make erratic movements during a turn or curve, our studies show there is an excellent chance that the motorcyclist is DWI. Vigilance concerns a person's ability to pay attention to a task or notice changes in surroundings. A motorcyclist whose vigilance has been impaired by alcohol might fail to notice that the light he or she has been waiting for has turned to green. A vigilance problem is also evident when a motorcyclist is inattentive to surroundings or seemingly unconcerned with detection. For example, there is a cause for suspicion of DWI when a motorcyclist fails to periodically scan the area around their bike when in traffic. A wise defensive riding procedure to guard against encroachment by other vehicles. There is further evidence of impairment if a motorcyclist fails to respond to an officer's emergency lights, siren, or hand signals. If you observe a motorcyclist to be inattentive to their surroundings, there is an excellent chance that the motorcyclist is DWI. You are probably familiar with weaving as a predictor of DWI. If you see an automobile weaving, there's a good chance that the driver has exceeded the legal limits of alcohol. But if you observe a motorcycle to be weaving, our studies show the probability of DWI is even greater. Weaving includes weaving within a lane or weaving across lane lines, but does not include the movements necessary to avoid road hazards. The next category of cues is called inappropriate or unusual behavior cues. This category includes behaviors such as operating a motorcycle while holding an object with one hand or under an arm, carrying an open container of alcohol, dropping an item from a motorcycle, urinating at roadside, arguing with another motorist or otherwise being disorderly. 
The results from our studies indicate that if you observe inappropriate or unusual behavior by a motorcyclist, there is an excellent chance that the motorcyclist is DWI. If you observe a motorcycle making erratic movements or sudden corrections while attempting to ride in a straight line, study results indicated there is a good probability that the rider is DWI. In other words, during the study, between 30 and 50 percent of the time, erratic movements observed while going straight were associated with impaired operation. Obviously, riding into opposing traffic is extremely dangerous. Study results show that when you find a motorcycle going the wrong way in traffic, there is a good chance that the operator is under the influence. This includes going the wrong way on a one-way street and crossing a center divider line to ride into opposing traffic. The studies indicated a few other cues to look for as predictive of DWI. For example, operating at night without lights is a good cue if the motorcyclist is riding an older motorcycle and recklessness or riding too fast for conditions is also a good cue. Another good predictor of DWI is failure to stop at a red light or stop sign and following too closely. Also, if a motorcyclist attempts to evade an officer's enforcement stop, studies show there is a good chance the motorcyclist is DWI. To summarize, the 14 cues found by the NHTSA studies to be most predictive of DWI are presented in two categories. Excellent cues with probabilities of 50% or better include drifting during a turn or curve, trouble with dismount, trouble with balance at a stop, turning problems, inattention to surroundings, inappropriate or unusual behavior and weep. Good cues with probabilities of 30 to 50 percent include erratic movements while going straight, operating without lights at night, recklessness, following too closely, running a stoplight or sign, evasion, and going the wrong way. All of these cues apply in both daylight and nighttime conditions. <laughs>